In our new segment, Movie Review Roundup, we're going to be interviewing Margaret Carey about Disney's The Pirate Fairy. Hey ho, imagine the places that we'll go. No one can stop us when we're so high. They will all cower in fear. It's not often that the opportunity comes up where you get to meet a real Disney legend. Not too long ago, we had the pleasure of meeting Ms. Margaret Carey, who was the animation reference model for Tinkerbell in the original Peter Pan film. Since then, we've had Margaret on one of our most downloaded episodes. Now, we have her back to talk about Disney's new Tinkerbell film, The Pirate Fairy. Hey, hey, Margaret. Hi, I'm here. Yay. Uh Um... We, we sound very enthusiastic about the movie A Pirate Fairy. Are, are all of us feeling the same way? I think so. Oh, definitely. You know what? If I was a little girl when I saw that movie, I, I would be all over these Tinkerbell movies. Uh, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. It was just adorable. And, um, you know, I mentioned before we went on the air that, that yesterday... Um, You've heard of Marty Scalar. Most everyone knows of Marty Scalar. who was so big at Disney Studios. Yes. Uh, well, and he's retired. And one of the things that he does is he raises funds for his favorite charity, which is Ryman Arts. And Herb Ryman was the man who did the um, map for Walt Disney. And they say in 48 hours, so... So Walt Disney and his brother could take it back to New York and and sell it to the people back there, you know, kind of thing. Uh-huh. And uh, so there is a an art, uh, Ryman Arts, that helps and gives scholarships to young folks who see whether they want to be artists. And I was came to their fundraiser, and I was auctioned off to be a tour guide. <laughs> Guess what? That's what I was doing yesterday. Oh. I was. Tour guide at Disney Studios. And you know that it is the second happiest place on earth. They couldn't get over, literally could not get over, how happy everyone was. And it was laughter. And we just had a wonderful time. We ended up at the archives, which has just been remodeled. Uh And uh, uh, they're going to have quite a few tours for groups that belong to D23. Right. I understand why people say, oh, you were, oh, oh, I wish I could work for Disney. Well, my dear, um, I think Disney has over 650,000 employees around the world. So the chances are you can. But you, <laughs> you people have to let Disney know that you're there, that you want to go to work for them. Definitely. Well, thank goodness Disney's always trying to keep ahead of itself, especially with the Tinkerbell films. And now with the Pirate Fairy, what did you think of the film? Well, I'm always so surprised to see Tinkerbell, and she doesn't look like Mark Davis Tinkerbell, no. which is okay, which is okay. Mark Davis is the man who designed Tinkerbell. He's one of the nine old men of Disney. He was my director. I got to work with this wonderful gentleman, mm-hmm. and he would sketch things for me of how he wanted Tinkerbell to do this, that, or the other, and what and or bring in the storyboard. But I am just used to her in her little skirt. Did you know that um, Mark Davis uh, um, put in the, in the uh, character that he did that her skirt had only seven points on it? I did not. Did that was... that? Alice Davis, the wonderful Alice Davis, Mark's wife, Alice said he was, and it's very difficult to do seven points. Right. Really? As an artist. It, it really is. But that's what he called for. I think it's probably easier to do um, an even number because everything is you know, like You're right. even in a circle as an artist. I can see that. You were the reference model for Peter Pan. How many other films were you the reference model for Tinkerbell? Well, they used my work all the way through. Okay. All uh, the way through. Do you know how many um, films that was? Having a clue. <laughs> But I do know that um, when they first started making the series of four, you know, the last four before this film, um, I went over and visited them, and they asked me how how she would do this or how she would do that. And I would show them, and they go, oh! So it was, it was a, a more of a visit than anything else. But she, um, she has changed dramatically. Right. And... As my daughter said, and maybe you noticed this, so I'll let you talk about this for a minute. Uh, all of the 
darling fairies that were there, including Zarina, uh, they had older faces. They had teenager faces. You look at Tinkerbell's face, and she still looks like she's four years old. <laughs> she's got big, fat did cheeks, you, doesn't did she? Did you notice that? Yeah, she has, like, big, giant, fat cheeks. Yes, but, I mean, why is she the only one? There must be a good reason, because they don't do things what? unless they have a good reason. You know what? I think I have a reason, actually. What? In the first Tinkerbell film... Uh, the first Tinkerbell movie, all the other fairies were already established in Pixie Hollow, and Tinkerbell right. just is born in that first movie. So she's she right. is established as actually being younger than all of them. So but th- that much younger? I know. <laughs> I don't know. The other uh, thing was, I must say that I love Zarina's costume. Yes. <laughs> I wonder who the fairies have as their stylist. <laughs> they are all wearing such cute, cute things again. They and, are. And, and they switch around. Oh, wow. Have you been keeping up with all the Tinkerbell movies? I think so. Uh, <laughs> I've been so busy with my <clears throat> clubhouse that I have on my website, which I'm going to mention right now. <laughs> 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 it's called Tinkerbell Talks and dot com. And it is so Tinkerbell. Mm-hmm. It is so, I, I, you know, I got so excited about it because it is just so cozy and so magical. Um, we have about, oh my goodness, I think it's about 50 or a little less than 50 video clips of me starting out when I was four years old in our gang comedies all the way up to um, the, um, the fun talk, the short the short clips of the fun talk that I did at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. I was a hit. I got a standing <laughs> ovation. Aww. Other than Tinkerbell, who is your other favorite fairy in the Pirate Fairies? Oh, dear. I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> um, I think Gary Fairy is my favorite. Oh. <laughs> Gary. I think he's absolutely wonderful. He's, they play him just right. And uh, he is, you should pardon the expression, sort of strange with that strange name. (laughs) Yeah. But I just, he's sort of the catalyst. Um, uh, There were a couple of the pirates that were very, very delightful. Mm -hmm. There was one of them who was a little too mean for me, but then I'm old. I don't like mean pirates. (laughs) (laughs) You mean that mean old Captain Hook? Uh, he wasn't. That was what was so interesting until the very end of the of the show and of the movie, and then all the action. Yeah, that was remarkable. Don't you think those animators had a ball? I think so. Flying in the air. Oh my gosh, the artistry in that movie and the music to the film—it's just—it's gorgeous. Oh, my, my daughter's still humming it. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Hey ho, la 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 la. la. Yep. And, um, but but this, but I loved it that he would seem to be so nice to her, and it was if you really didn't know the story that much, and this was the first time that you were introduced to all of this, um, you would think, "My, he's a nice pirate." Oh, look at her! That little tiny thing is the captain that they call her, yeah. and they pay attention to her and all the rest of it. And then when he turns on her, yeah. and they get this ship to fly, I kept thinking, every artist that is working on this movie can hardly wait to that sequence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that adorable crocodile. Yes. <laughs> In the Peter Pan novels, now he's he's said to be tick tocking like a croc- crocodile, and he's eaten a clock, but in this movie we get to see him actually swallow the clock. Yes, yes. I'm waiting for the croc to bite his hand off. Yeah. Because that's what happened. But I thought, how clever of them to put all that together. Um, did, I think every once in a while, the Disney people are accused of being very clever. <laughs> and I think they're guilty of <laughs> it. Was, it was a romp. I, I'm I don't know why it didn't go to theater. Well, I know. It's just much cheaper and easier just to put them out on DVD. Yeah. Well, they, it did have a couple of theaters playing it. They've just 
made a billion dollars on Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to tinker with this film, what would you do differently? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's a loaded question, isn't it? I, I'm just curious, and I am not questioning because I, as I said, they're so. They, they think things out. I saw um, the star of this movie is Serena. Right. Uh, Tinkerbell is just sort of along for the ride. And I found that very interesting. It's as if we're introducing another fairy that is big enough that we can uh, sell merchandise with. <laughs> now, it turns out that she's absolutely adorable. It turns out that I think the casting of the voices is remarkable. Right. Just remarkable. And I thought they did a beautiful job with this. With the, I got to know them better. Okay. In, in this. I really, really did. And their little southern accent came through, you know, all this sort of thing. I thought that was absolutely adorable. As, as sweet and wonderful... As uh, all the pixie dust and, and Zarina goes in to, you know, mix up the blue pixie dust, I never thought of them working. <laughs> uh, uh, but what else were they going to do? Right. I love the story of, of Zarina. I love the story of the pirates. I love the, the, the ship. Uh, the, I love the music that goes with this, this movie. But do you notice what her... What she does is the same thing that I do. And the same thing, if you remember back in Peter Pan and Return to Neverland, that Tinkerbell does. Why isn't the dust pink? Why isn't, uh, what, what, some of the other questions that she asks. So you're saying that Tinkerbell questions everything. Uh, Tinkerbell questioned everything, and she had more fun about it. And I love her for it. The thing was, it was interesting to me, and, and was that she kept getting stopped by her bosses. Oh, Zarina? Like, Zarina kept getting Zarina stopped? Zarina got stopped by her bosses. Uh, what is that one line where, where she said, why isn't it pink? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and um, what is Gary Ferry says, uh, you must not ever tamper with it. So that, that's no answer. Right. You know, that, don't think that. Is the kind of thing. And that's how the Tinkerbell feels about things. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she's a chemist, and this is what she's interested in, I loved that about her. Because that's what we want our children to do. Right. Yeah. Oh, of course. Of, of we, course. We want everybody to say, why is that? One of my favorite questions is, uh, why don't pop-up toasters have see-through sides? So you know when the toast is done. <laughs> what did you all like best on it? I liked the interaction between the fairies and the fact that they all got the different powers, so they all kind of had to learn about each other in the process of trying to help each other out and, and steal back the blue fairy dust. Well said. Well said. I, I like that. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and the change of costume. Yeah, that was very cute. Even though <laughs> Tinkerbell didn't get her seven points on her skirt. <laughs> no, and her her costume was rather muted. Mm hmm. I think so too. But Zarina's costume, I'd take any time. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I want to make adorable. that and wear that. It's so cute. Now, what did you think of Mae Whitman's voice acting as Tinkerbell? Oh, she's wonderful. Uh, I heard the first time when they had. Uh, the other actress way back when when they started mm -hmm. she's the one who passed away oh is it Brittany Murphy Brittany Murphy oh yeah she was Tinkerbell in the 2007 film Tinkerbell no she was she was not oh what happened was I'm over there and I'm listening to it and they're showing me the first part and they're telling me this story uh, of how it's going to go which was charming and I'm listening to this voice, and I'm thinking, I finally said something. Mm. I, I said her voice, she's wonderful, but she's too old. Mm. She sounds like a 22-year-old. Right. I mean, you're saying that this is a, a brand-new fairy who just uh, uh, 
have sailed over to Neverland and is just literally just being born. And they said, well, she, we, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've recorded it and so on and so forth. Well, they changed it. Oh, really? I guess they got, yeah, they got Nate, uh, Nate to do it. And did I tell you, I was on the platform with May one time, not very long ago. She is one of the most excited people to be the voice of Tinkerbell. <laughs> she is like Tinkerbell. <laughs> she was, she, she, uh, you think I talk? <laughs> is she a talker? I, you, you you get her rolling on Tinkerbell. She, I can't believe it. I do the voice of Tinkerbell. She is just, and she's such fun. And I, 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 I and it go, Oh, it was. It Sounds was, like me. You know, because you can get somebody as an actress who might say, "Oh yes, well that's just one of the things that I do." And then I'm also in. But with May Whitman, it is so important to her. Oh. And it's an exciting moment of her life, and I love it because it is an exciting moment of her life. Yeah, that's so good to hear. Now, if you were to write a Tinkerbell film, what would it be about? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> it would all be about Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be the star. <laughs> um, I think I would have her save the world. <laughs> <laughs> a small adventure. You're laughing, but she could do it. She could do it. Yeah, she would. She would call in all of her friends, and because she is a good leader, hmm. she would say, "Now I need to know about all this stuff called physics. You tell me about that, and we'll put that together with how we take care of the water." And, and then she would give each one an assignment, and then she would check with the powers that be, and somehow she would stop the asteroid, or she would. What, that's what I would do. I'd make her a superhero. <laughs> Can you imagine all the work in this movie, the um, fairy pirate? Um, I mean, the pirate fairy. <laughs> I get this backwards. Um, of all the pixie dust that they had around the characters, the pirates, each pirate, as the ship was flying up in the, in the air. Mm -hmm. And you remember Captain Hook, who was hanging on to uh, a mainsail? And all over his arms, his hands, every place, there's pixie dust, and it glows. And I'm thinking, my gosh, what patience <laughs> to, the, to the artist to make that happen, because it's a remarkable scene. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, both my daughter and I sat there, Chris is her name, we sat there in wonderment, oh. just as I did with Frozen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just took my breath away. It was it was it was so incredible, and I thought the the scenes that they had in in this movie, and and, and we keep talking about the uh, the end uh, near the end the the climax of it. I just thought they were amazing, <laughs> and I hope that people really along that line while they're enjoying the movie. Mm -hmm. I hope that they know that this is amazing stuff that they're seeing on the screen. Yeah, it definitely had more story and more themes and more character than most big budget blockbusters do. Absolutely. And the charm of it was wonderful. I was worried all the way through after Serena took the um, the blue, blue fairy dust, though. Yes. And I turned to my daughter Later on, and I said, I had one anxiety, and she said that they would drop the the container that held the blue pixie dust, and it would break. Yes. I said, how did you know that? She said, that's the way I felt. <laughs> you know, they were, they were holding it like it was absolutely nothing, and we're seeing a glass container with the most priceless uh, pixie dust around. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought, well, I guess we took this picture quite seriously then. <laughs> Isn't it lovely that all five of these movies have taught something? Yes, I agree. It is really, really wonderful, and it's not wasted on children. I will tell you. Well, what's not to enjoy? <laughs> uh, it, it was Serena's picture, and it should have been. And she's adorable, and she should join with everybody. And that I keep coming back to that wonderful costume of hers. Now, be before we wrap things up, can you tell us what you would think Walt Disney would think about 
about the pirate fairy? Oh, I think he would be absolutely delighted. Um, it has everything that a Disney a Disney movie should have like this. It has um, ador- adorable characters, and I just I get warm all over when I see <laughs> these wonderful characters, and I want to take them home with me. Oh, I hope when they're making these movies, they they keep thinking to themselves: Would Walt approve of this? Would Would Walt really like this? Well, I think they've transferred a little bit of that because with the first movie, as you know, I um, they were not they were feeling their way in the dark of what to do, and this was the first time that Tinkerbell talked to because she was talking to other fairies and all of this, and <clears throat> they tried three or four different storylines and. And they had done a lot of the animation, which I had seen. Uh, I talked to them later, and they said, uh, I said, how is it going? And Bill is a good friend of mine over there, Bill Turner. And he said, "Uh, well, it's going great, because we just had uh, Bleak Tuesday, I think, as he said. I said, what? He said, well, we're about to show it to the new guy on the block named Lassiter. (laughs) And they had uh, just bought Pixar. Right. And Lassiter had just come in. And, of course, it was like, oh, <laughs> you know, is this, is this, is this what, well, I think Walt would have loved this. You know, there's <laughs> enough magic in it. And of course, that's what he worried about more than anything else. Is there enough magic in it? Does it elicit magical feelings in the audience? Does the storyline hold together? And is the storyline magical? Right. That, that, if you look at it, everything that he did boiled down to that. So anyway, the story is from the people who were there. The, uh, John Lasseter walked in, who is the neatest guy. He is the easiest person to talk to. And the last time I saw him at the big 90th party, I reminded him of who I am, because, of course, I don't see him that often. He said, oh, I'm so glad. He threw his arms around me and gave me such a hug. How are you? How is it going? He, he was just a sweetheart, and he had on his Hawaiian shirt <laughs> with a tuxedo jacket over it. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so they said, and he sat there, and he went, hmm. They could tell that he was not really terribly impressed. Right? Hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, they were waiting for him to say, we've got to start all over or let's scrap this. I mean, literally. Wow. Some of them. Because they, they were trying something new, something different. And, and, when you're, and you have no one to guide it. That's what Walt Disney did. He guided everyone as they started something. And he'd guide them away from this and to that. Well, John Lasseter said, he said, I think you, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing words, so... This is not a quote. But it turned out that he said something like, I've got a couple of storyline ideas that I'd like to uh, to tell you about, and you might be able to use one or two of them. So I'll, um, you know, I'll either, he told them then, or he said, I'll send them to you. But he says, you know, keep up the good work, or something like that, and left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So they used one of his storylines, and they sort of, uh, moved it over because he said it was brilliant, and it, and he of course said okay because it wouldn't have been released right. if he hadn't been pleased with it. So I think that they're thinking now to start out with, um, is it magical enough? Well, Margaret, thank you so much for joining us on Skywalking Through Neverland and talking about the Pirate Fairy. And we look forward to talking to you about the next Tinkerbell film that comes out. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea. You two are terrific. I love it. your teamwork. I love what you're doing. And um, I, I'm just going to just send a whole bunch of magic pixie dust your way. What do you think? <laughs> uh, we'll take it. <laughs> Accepted. <laughs> okay, and I just want to, again, invite people to get on my website, TinkerbellTalks.com, and take a look at the clubhouse because they might want to become a member. And we have a special Facebook inside the clubhouse Ooh. and special blogs. And so, and as I say, it is so Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, thank Yay. you, thank you. Hugs and kisses. I had a wonderful time as usual. Thank you for asking me. Okay, dears, bye-bye. Bye. Oh, Richard, it's always such a thrill to talk to such a Disney legend.
It was so exciting. Well, she is never short on stories. No, <laughs> no. Oh, she's so she's so cute and so sweet to listen to. I just love her voice. Yeah, there's so much there's so much excitement in her voice. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. No and matter, mischief. No matter what she <laughs> no matter what she's talking about, she's always just so excited. It's true. Now we did mention in our show at the beginning of the show that we would have some big news regarding Margaret Carey and Skywalking Through Neverland. Reveal, reveal, reveal. Well, how often do you have a problem that you just can't find a solution for? All the time. You do? Well, those days are now behind you, Richard. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> because starting in two weeks, Margaret Carey will officially be Skywalking Through Neverland's fairy godmother. Squeal. <laughs> she will be here to answer any question you have regarding family, career, or relationships. So think Dear Abby meets Tinkerbell. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it is. <laughs> so send questions in that you want to ask Margaret Carey. Send those questions in to us at share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Or if you want to go to our website, skywalkingthroughneverland.com, and click on the little link on the right side of the page, you can leave a voice message for her to hear, and then she can answer you directly. So that'll be really fun because she can, she can hear some of the questions personally from the yes. fans. Yes. Yeah, Which here would be really, really fun. So uh, we snuck this out there to a few listeners. We've already gotten lots of emails and messages. So this is going to be a really, really fun new segment. And Margaret Carey was, like, was very, very excited to hear this. And as she said... Let's face it. As Margaret Carey and as Tinkerbell, I always have an opinion. Oh, we have a fairy godmother, Richard. Your days of problems are now far behind you. <laughs> Yay. With Margaret Carey and Tinkerbell on your side. Now, we have to celebrate because Margaret's birthday is coming up on May 11th. Shh. <gasps> what? We don't, want, we don't want her to hear because we have some special surprises. We do? What, what are they? Well, if you would like to send her a little of your own faith, trust, pixie dust, and birthday wishes, email us and or leave a voice message on our, on our website. And we will play some of these messages on our show as well as compiling all of these messages and putting them on a CD and sending it to her. Oh, how nice. Not only will we send it to her, we're going to we're going to personally give it to her <gasps> in a very special way, but we we no no spoilers just yet. No. We're still working out some logistics. Okay. That is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and something I'm pretty sure she has never had or seen before. Yay. So it'll be really really fun. So if you have a special message, please go ahead and send it in. Now, you have until Tuesday, May the 6th to send in your voice messages. Yes. Because we need a couple of days to compile everything and, and put them on a, on a CD. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to email, that's fine too, but we need those emails by Friday, May the 9th. Okay. So once again, that's email share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com or go to our website and there's a voice message tab on the right side of the page that will pop up when you first open up our website, skywalkingthroughneverland.com. And wish Margaret Carey a happy birthday and ask her your pressing questions. 